All right, welcome in. Uh, we'll continue with our discussion of uh, terrain. Uh, let me get a share screen. So uh, next in detail I want to talk about uh, in terms of building our uh, synthetic worlds is the skybox. Now we've already seen the skybox in our um, uh, uh, default world here. Um, the default skybox is a physics-based computation of atmospheric scattering. Uh, so this blue sky that we see over here is is based on the physics of uh, uh, how how light works through the atmosphere. And uh, if we play with the uh, the light here. Uh, It's set. And as, as this light goes lower, you can see the uh, we go into a kind of sunset thing. So uh, the the default skybox has this uh, has this capability. Oops, has this capability of computing what the atmospheric scattering. Uh, does and there's some settings that you can fiddle around to make it look otherworldly and so forth. Um, but there are also skyboxes that uh, that um, are made up of uh, a, a sequence of images. Uh, you have top, bottom, left, right, forward, and back. The the six images that surround the world. And I've provided a few from an old Unity 4 standard assets uh, that are no longer there. And I think I've loaded these already. Yeah, here they are. So here's what these things look like. They're the, the six images, uh, uh, front, back, left, right, up, and down. And this is what the skybox kind of looks like as, as you're inside this box. Uh, and uh, it's very simple to change the skybox. We go into that lighting window, which you remember we got from uh, the, the lighting settings. And uh, we choose one of these uh, uh, skyboxes. Um, here's uh, overcast skybox. And so now our world looks a bit different because we have this kind of spooky uh, overcast sky uh, that surrounds our world. And the, the skybox is kind of magical because it's behind everything. So it's far away. It's a box that encloses it. Um, uh, another environmental aspect are the water objects. And this again is something that comes in with standard assets, standard assets environment. Uh, we have the various waters. We have the various waters. Um, the kind of standard water uh, comes with prefabs uh, for a daytime water and a nighttime water. And let me just pick over here. Oops. Um, I had that depression, and so if I bring uh, a water object in and put it in the world, maybe I can fill that uh, depression with water. Um, the water objects are a little circle. Uh, they're not very big, uh, so I can use my scaling things to make it bigger. and uh, put it where I want it. And uh, I'll put it that, uh, let's see, the ground level is at 20. So if I put this at say 15, it should be uh, below the thing. Let me just make this bigger. I'll make it really big. Um, so there should be now water in the scene. Let me see if it shows. 
turn around here. Uh, where's my hole? The hole's over here. And you can see the water surface here in our depression. And uh, notice it, it's got nice reflections. Uh, with uh, the water setting, the water, there are two different settings. Uh, there's uh, the water object has two different settings. One is refractive. Refractive, we can see reflections but uh, we can also see into the water. So we could see textures below the water. And the other is reflective, where uh, we can't see into the water, but we see these reflections. And I believe then there's also a basic, a simple, that is just going to make uh, 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 a ripply water surface. And uh, all three of these have kind of moving uh, uh, textures, uh, the, the various ripples that are going on here uh, uh, on our water. And uh, these have some settings that you can change the wave and, and so forth. So that's water. Um, in standard assets, we also get a water basic, which is sort of like the uh, Water Pro Daytime in its simple setting. And there's also a water four which is a fancier one that uh, the mesh of the water actually moves up and down like waves. Uh, it turns out to be very laggy, however. Um, the, the next thing I'll talk about is height maps. Um, when we were looking at the terrain here and we were looking at the settings, uh, down here there's uh, a height map, height map resolution and we have uh, uh, and import and export. Now, um, uh, technically, we can take this uh, height map that we have painted on our scene and export it and then edit it in a photo uh, uh, shop-like environment and change it. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't seem to work anymore. The exported raw I've been unable to open in either Photoshop Elements 2020, which is what I have, or GIMP 210, which is the other free Photoshop editor. So the export and so forth doesn't work that well. But I can show you, uh, let me make another scene here. Let me uh, make a copy of this scene. And go into this copy. I'll save it so that we have the water. And I'll delete this terrain and uh, add another one and another terrain. And I'll make this one fairly small, uh, say uh, 100 by 100. And uh, 20 height, and I'll put my character at the center of that. So that's going to be at 10, 20, 10. Uh, so I should have a character in the center of my terrain uh, that's all flat here. So, um, um, if one could uh, make a raw, uh, and that's the trick here is that the format of these images has to be raw, uh, and we can create one that has uh, a, a, an, an image that's either 513 by 513 or 1025 by 1025 or 2049 by 2049, basically a power of two plus one. Uh, 72 DPI resolution, grayscale, um, I, I believe 8-bit. Uh, uh, you can then paint whatever you want on that image, and anything that's white will be a high terrain, and anything that's black will be a low terrain. White will actually be the, the, the top of uh, our terrain height setting, and black will be the 
bottom of our terrain height setting. Um, and I've made one of these here and I will import it. Um, I'll import it. Um, it's got my name on it. Uh, and uh, I have to set Mac and I'll import it. And now my terrain has uh, the, uh, the gym on it. Now, when I drew this, I of course made it right side up. And uh, for some reason, uh, we need to uh, invert it. So uh, again, Mac, and again, flip vertically and I'll bring it in and now it's right. So if you are making a terrain, remember that it has to be flipped in order for it to have the right sense. So now my terrain includes this uh, three-dimensional version of my name. Now, of course, um, drawing by hand is, is hard. Uh, and one thing that we can do is use a DEM, a digital elevation model. Uh, I'm, I provided one for you of Antarctica, and I think I've got one of one of the polar caps of Mars. But uh, I found this uh, great place for getting terrain off the Earth uh, called Terrain Party. And I've got it open here in Chrome. Terrain Party is basically a map of the world. You put this little uh, blue square whose size you can adjust to encompass a region that will go up to 60 kilometers. And you can uh, ask to download this terrain and it makes uh, uh, PNGs of the terrain. Now, the PNGs have to be turned into RAWs. So you've got to, uh, uh, you, you do have to edit them in Photoshop if your Photoshop has the ability to export raw uh, or GIMP, which does export raw, uh, and copy them into a grayscale raw file of appropriate dimensions, uh, uh, 513 or 1025 or 2049 uh, and 72 DPI. And so I've done that. Um, and so here's my terrain. I'll import uh, raw uh, one of these. Uh, let's see, I think uh, maybe test raw is one that I've done. Back, flip vertically, and import. Um, and so this, I believe, is uh, a scene from the Alps. This is the Matterhorn. And so I've got now, uh, without doing any work, a uh, topography that uh, is an accurate representation of the real terrain from the Alps. Uh, this is the top of the Matterhorn right here. Uh, and uh, now you notice that um, uh, these things have these kind of steps in them. Um, this is has to do with the resolution of uh, the vertical dim dimension in the terrain maps. And so this is now a candidate for smoothing. Uh, so I can go over here to the paint. Uh, uh, I'll pick the smooth height. Uh, I'll pick uh, a, a big brush. Uh, and I'll kind of smooth it a couple times by just clicking that and uh, that smoothed my height. And so hopefully those steps that were there as artifacts have pretty much gone away and the terrain is much more manageable. Uh, they're still there a little bit, but uh, a couple more smoothing steps would take them out. You don't want to do that too much or you'll actually smooth the terrain. So um, um, that's all very cool. And uh, uh, I'm going to uh, stop sharing here. And um, I'm going to end the recording. And I'll see you all in class. Bye.